They are our friends and our neighbors. They are St. Louisans. And many of us forget that some of them have been through hell. Tonight in our Making a Difference report, the massive project at Fontbonne University documenting incredible stories of survival. Was shot in the head at, you know, what, 12, 13 years old? Nije bilo hrani, nije bilo ništa. We didn't have food, we didn't have anything. Once the war happened, everything basically just fell apart. They're turning back the pages of their memories. There was a guy that shot the, one of the guns in, in, a, in, a, in a, on the street. To the worst they, chapters they of their lives. Was, everyone was just scared for their life, that they were either just going to be killed right then and there. They are St. Louisans, but you didn't know, grow up Claire, here. Imagine someone hating you because of what happened in Bosnia. And their like, journeys yeah, began a half a world away. So the first Bosnians uh, began arriving in St. Louis in 1993. Dr. Benjamin Moore is a professor at Fontbonne University. And I think one of the risks we face. And the founder and director of the Bosnian Memory Project. We have a tremendous amount to learn from people who came to St. Louis to join us in this community, but who came because of absolutely horrific circumstances. In 1992, after Bosnia-Herzegovina declared its independence from Yugoslavia, people who had lived peacefully for years as neighbors turned against each other. Over the next several years, more than 100,000 men, women, and children were killed mostly Bosnian Muslims. To make a place ethnically pure, as the extreme nationalists wanted to have it, it involved getting rid of people either by killing them or expelling them or terrorizing them to the point that they would flee. Many fled here to St. Louis. Attracted by the low cost of living and available housing, they came in such large numbers that even though some have left, there are still more Bosnians per capita in St. Louis than anywhere else outside of Bosnia. I kept meeting people from Bosnia in the grocery stores, getting my oil changed in just my day-to-day -day work. I knew we had this, this irreplaceable resource for understanding history through the eyes of people who experienced it. You can see it's just page after page. Oh my gosh. With help from a grant from the National Endowment of the Humanities, Dr. Moore and his team have taken the oral histories from hundreds of genocide survivors. I remember... 28-year-old Samira Mojic was just eight when she arrived in St. Louis. My aunt was already here first and she told us it was good and they knew more Bosnians were here. Samira learned the language, graduated from college, and now works at Bilingual International, a nonprofit that assists refugees. Her father never made it to the U.S. And all these years later, she's still picking up the pieces of her broken heart. Um, I don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about that, okay. Yeah. Though St. Louis is now home, Samira has traveled back to the place where she once wasn't welcome. Both she and Dr. Moore describe Bosnia as breathtakingly beautiful. But underneath it all is, of course, this terrible tragedy where people were targeted for terrible things because of their... Um, because of their ethnicity. The windows were all shattered. All the buildings had like blood on them. They fought everybody. They just like to fight. The past can be painful, but not as painful as ignorance. And to this day, people fear that another war will start because of all the problems. Which is why it's important to learn the lessons of history. So this won't happen again because in Bosnia, we thought this would never happen. The Bosnian Memory Project helping us remember what we should never forget. If you'd like to learn more, we can link you to the Memory Project website when you go to the story on our website. And a reminder, we're always looking for inspiring people or people making a difference. If you know a story, send an email to mbush at kstk.com.